Hi there, everyone. We've got another box to open here at the Royal Society. You know I love opening boxes, don't boxes you? Boxes are great. You never know what you're going to find. So, Keith, what actually is in this box? Well, this is an 18th century astronomical quadrant, a very beautiful piece of equipment, a nice instrument. And uh, in pieces, it's possibly associated with someone you will know very well, however, and that would be James Cook. James Cook? I know him. Yep. So uh, let's maybe take a look and see what we can find. Okay, let's do it. Oh, look at that. It's even wrapped like a Christmas present. 12 inch Astron Quadrant by Bird, 15 parts, each numbered, 12 parts in box. This would have been made in the 1760s and used for the expeditions associated with the transit of Venus, which of course you know very well. The Royal Society bought lots of instruments to lend out to astronomers who were going off to make observations. Cook was, Cook's expedition was part of that. Uh, they were very bad at recording which instruments went to who. So it's always just that there's always a little bit of doubt in our minds as to which instrument is associated with which person. So. Uh, possibly Cook. There are some interesting elements which might suggest that a little more strongly, but we'll need to unpack it to find out. Oh, look at this. You can see here yep. it's got Royal Society written on it, engraved. They did number all of their instruments, as you can see, and you can also see the maker's mark just here. So John Bird, he's inscribed his name. Oh, oh, yeah. There we go. What we'll do yep. is put the box down on the floor. So let me take that one. You got it? Got that. Oh, that's nice. Look at that. RS62. There's lots of little parts here as well. And Oh dear. Caution. Broken part. Aha. So you've been here already, Brady. <laughs> <laughs> Last one. This is harder than an Ikea thing. This yeah. Is... Well, we, we did the microscope, so, you know. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Piece of cake. Mm -hmm. oh, well, that was the easy part. So the principle of um, this piece of equipment, as you can see, what you're looking to do is to measure the angle between the horizon and an astronomical object. Now you're like, oh, there it is up there. Yep, that's oh, right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Oh, yeah. There. Now, obviously, in assembling the whole thing, what you'd be looking to do would be to screw everything happily into place here. Oh, yeah. There we go. So there we go. Uh, which we won't do this time. All but right. we'll, we'll just get an idea of, of yeah. what the thing would look like. Unfortunately, uh, the quadrant that Cook used uh, was stolen. Oh, OK. So he got all the way there on Tahiti, in Cook's case, and then one of the locals took a shine to it and, and pinched it. So your friend, Joseph Banks, had to then recover it. How did Banks recover it? It was good. He, he went out and because he had some knowledge of the language, he could then talk to people there and he gradually did recover it. Now, it was, uh, when he recovered it, slightly damaged and therefore his uh, secretary, his assistant, had to try and repair it, which they did just in time to take the observation. Can you see that the metal at this part is different? I see what you mean, Keith. Here it's kind of this brassy it's colour brass, isn't it? of yeah. everything. And then once you get up to this bit in the middle, it's a different kind of it, copper. It looks like a replacement piece, though, doesn't it? So we don't know if that particular repair, if that's what it is, is associated with the damage done to the quadrant when Cook had it. But it might be just a little clue as to identifying if this instrument is indeed the one that Cook took with him. Oh yeah, you can imagine this was the damaged bit where they did a dodgy repair and then when they mm. got back to the UK they, they put in this nice bronze one. So. Yeah. Oh, this is interesting. Again, it's got RS62 on it. Basically every piece has yeah. 62 engraved on it. They were, they were big on, there we go, look, that's got RS62 on it as well. I have no idea what this is. It's like... I think it may be a plumb bob, so that you can see there's a thread just running down here, and that would give you a straight up and down level. Okay. So it would hang, in other words. Because this has got... It's got something in it, hasn't it? It may be something to um, take the moisture out of the box. Can I have a little Captain Cook moment and just look through well, it? Well, yes. So I could be looking through what Captain Cook looked through. Awesome. There's like crosshairs at the end. So you could aim just right. 
The second eyepiece, you'd have to get very low. Oh, for. no, yeah, I can see. And you've got like a whole grid, I can see. Mm -hmm. In the field, this would have been put on top of a barrel filled with wet sand, so it was nice and sturdy. And of course, you could duck below the level of it to get a good observation. It's as good as new, Keith. It's yeah. amazing. So there you have it, a nice basic scientific instrument for the period and, and a rather beautiful thing. Beautiful. And maybe if this is the Captain Cook one, then really Maybe super, very important. Yeah, yeah. Super yeah. special. This is like a Swiss army knife of spectroscopes. <laughs> it's got little bits coming off it everywhere. I love it. What happens to this now? Where does it live? What's its purpose? It's a museum piece these days, so we uh, occasionally exhibit it. And uh, it's part of the Royal Society's permanent collection. It, it tells you a little bit about how the Royal Society acted over the years to support science.